You finally feel focused. Your brain clicks on. The fog lifts. But 20 minutes later, your heart's pounding. Your hands are shaky. You can't sleep. The thing that gave you clarity, it might be wrecking everything else. Nearly half of people with ADHD turn to nicotine. Not for the buzz, the focus. And it works. But here's the catch. That same boost rewires your nervous system. Not slowly, instantly. So why does something that feels so right go so wrong? And why don't doctors tell you that nicotine actually helps? And more importantly, who am I to be that doctor? My name is Dr. Salmani Tez Mirza, triple board certified in adult psychiatry, child and adolescent psychiatry, and addiction medicine. And today we're unpacking the secret cost of using nicotine for focus. Why does nicotine help people with ADHD focus when every doctor says to stay away? Because it actually works at first. ADHD brains don't handle dopamine well. The signals are out of sync. The reward systems are laggy. Staying on task feels like swimming upstream. Then nicotine shows up. It hits the exact receptors where ADHD brains struggle, alpha four, beta two. Within seconds, dopamine floods the brain and suddenly you're locked in. You're clear, you're capable. For those who want to get a little more technical, nicotine targets the ventral tegmental area and nucleus accumbens, two key hubs in your mesolimbic reward pathway. It's like hitting the gas on focus and motivation at the same time. Studies back this up. Working memory improves, attention sharpens. One study even gave participants nicotine nasal spray and people with ADHD chose it over placebo every time. Not because they were guessing, because they felt it. But here's the catch. That clarity doesn't come from fixing the brain. It comes from overriding it. Nicotine doesn't just nudge dopamine, it floods the system. It dials up your brain's reward volume to 11 and keeps it there. And your brain takes notes. It remembers, it craves, it chases. What started as a helpful boost becomes a necessary one. Not because your ADHD got worse, but because nicotine taught your brain to depend on it. And that's the trap. What feels like a shortcut to clarity rewires your brain to believe it can't focus without it. Here's what most people don't realize. Nicotine patches help people quit smoking, even though nicotine is the addictive part. How does that make any sense? It all comes down to one word, speed. The same chemical, nicotine, can act like a medicine or a trap. The difference? How fast it hits your brain. Take smoking, for example. Light up a cigarette and nicotine hits your brain in about 10 to 20 seconds. It's faster than your brain can process most thoughts. And it loves that dopamine spike. Compare that to a nicotine patch. Patch delivers nicotine slowly over hours. No rush, no buzz. Just a gentle trickle your brain barely notices and that timing makes all the difference. Fast delivery lights up your brain's reward system like a slot machine jackpot. It trains your brain to associate that rush with relief, with clarity, control. And it wants to feel that again, and again, and again. Slow delivery, not the same story. Your reward system doesn't panic. No craving loop gets created. You still get that some dopamine effect, but without flipping the addiction switch. If you want the technical breakdown, fast nicotine spikes strongly activate the dopaminergic system, especially the mesolimbic and mesocortical pathways. Slow delivery doesn't hit that threshold. Think of a shot of espresso versus slow drip decaf. And yes, Sabrina Carpenter, my daughters love you. The results speak for themselves. A major review found that nicotine replacement therapies, patches, gums, lozenges, sprays, increase quitting rates by 50 to 60%. These aren't dopamine blockers, they're just slow dopamine enhancers. Even the FDA says it's safe to use multiple nicotine replacement therapies at once, like a patch plus a gum, because none of them flood your brain the way that smoking or vaping does. Some researchers are even exploring whether slow release nicotine could help ADHD symptoms without triggering addiction. But let's be honest, most people aren't reaching for patches, they're reaching for something that feels cleaner than cigarettes, more controlled than meds, and hits just as fast. 
spoiler, that middle ground is vaping. And it's not neutral. Vaping feels like the perfect solution for ADHD brains. Fast, smooth, clean, and in your control. But that's exactly what makes it dangerous. Just like smoking, vaping delivers nicotine to your brain in about 10 to 20 seconds. That's instant gratification. But because there's no smoke, no ash, no smell, it feels safer, more manageable, less like a drug, and more like a tool. That illusion makes it even more appealing. And the devices? They're sleek, discreet, and always within reach. One puff before class, another before a meeting. Suddenly you're microdosing all day without realizing it. It feels like medication. Use when symptoms spike. Skip when they don't. But it's not medicine. It's habit training. Even the ritual becomes addictive. The hand-to-mouth motion. The vapor cloud. The flavor variety. For ADHD brains wired for novelty and stimulation, it's a sensory reward buffet. Add to that the fact that vaping doesn't carry the same social stigma as smoking. You can do it almost everywhere. No side eyes, no shame. That means more frequency and fewer natural limits. And vape marketing leans into this. Harm reduction, they say, cleaner than cigarettes. For someone looking to stay functional, that sounds like a smart compromise. But here's the trap. What feels like controlled use is your brain being trained to expect a reward every 15 to 30 minutes. It starts to anticipate that dopamine spike. And when it doesn't come, irritability, brain fog, distraction, all masquerading as ADHD when it's really withdrawal. For the science-minded, vaping creates a spike crash cycle. Unlike patches, which maintain baseline levels, vaping causes dopamine surges and dips. That up and down rhythm wires your brain for dependence. Over time, you're not vaping to get ahead, you're vaping just to feel normal. And the worst part? The very features that make vaping so appealing for ADHD, the quick relief, the ease, the stimulation, are the same ones that make it so addictive. Most people using nicotine for ADHD think it's just about focus and stimulation. But what it actually triggers is your body's full bone stress response. When nicotine hits, it activates your sympathetic nervous system, the same system that kicks in when you're in danger. It tells your body, fight, flee, or freeze. Your adrenal glands dump adrenaline into your bloodstream. Within minutes, your heart rate jumps. Blood pressure rises. Breathing speeds up. Blood sugar spikes. You feel alert. But it's not calm clarity. It's chemical alarm. And when this happens day after day, that stress response stops being a short-term boost and becomes your body's new baseline. Cardiovascular strain builds. Your risk for hypertension rises. And that on-edge feeling becomes the default, not the exception. But we're just getting started. Nicotine also messes with your immune system. It binds to nicotinic receptors on immune cells and alters how they function. That makes you more vulnerable to illness, even if you feel fine. Then there's appetite. Nicotine suppresses hunger by acting on your hypothalamus, your brain's command center for eating. It tells you you're full, even when you're not. And it ramps up how fast you burn energy. For people with ADHD who struggle with impulsive eating or weight issues, this can seem like a bonus. But let's be real, using stress hormones to manage weight, that's not health. That's burnout disguised as control. And then there's sleep. Nicotine wrecks your rest. Studies show it suppresses REM and slow wave sleep, the two stages your brain needs most to recover, regulate emotions, and focus. You wake up foggy, restless, and more likely to reach for another hit just to get going. Over time, your brain adjusts to this cycle. Receptors desensitize. You need more nicotine to get the same effect. What started as a productivity tool now just helps you survive the day. And the symptoms? Anxiety, irritability, focus problems, poor sleep, they don't just feel like ADHD anymore, they're the effects of withdrawal. And that's what most people miss. Nicotine doesn't just hijack your focus, it rewires your entire stress system. You're not treating your ADHD, you're managing a dependency. Here's the part most people don't expect. Nicotine does have real benefits. The research backs it up. In controlled studies using slow delivery methods like patches, gums, or sprays, Nicotine has been shown to improve working memory, sharpen attention, and boost fine motor skills. These aren't just marginal gains. 
they're measurable even in a healthy adult. Some studies even show early promise in treating depression. In small trials, low-dose nicotine patches reduced depressive symptoms without triggering addiction. Why? Because the delivery was slow. No spikes, no reward loop, just steady stimulation. Then there's the Parkinson's connection. Smokers have lower rates of Parkinson's disease, a paradox that researchers believe may be linked to nicotine's neuroprotective effects. We don't know for sure if nicotine is the key or if it's something else in the smoking profile, but the data keeps showing up. Same goes for Alzheimer's. Some research suggests nicotine may improve memory or reduce dementia risk, though again, the delivery method matters. Smoking increases stroke risk, which raises your chance of dementia. So whatever benefits exist may be getting canceled out in the real world. And yes, nicotine curbs appetite and increases energy burn. For people with ADHD dealing with weight fluctuations or impulsive eating, that might feel like a benefit. But here's the red flag. When appetite suppression comes from stress hormones, not true metabolic balance, it's not sustainable. It's a crash diet for your nervous system. The takeaway? These benefits are real, but they only exist under controlled conditions. Slow, steady delivery, medical supervision, clear purpose, that's therapeutic use. Fast repeat hits through vaping or smoking, that's recreational use. And that's where the danger lives. So yes, nicotine can help. But outside of very specific medical context, the risk isn't just addiction. It's a misunderstanding how and why it helps in the first place. So here's the truth. Nicotine doesn't just boost dopamine. It spikes your heart rate. It disrupts your sleep. It throws your immune system off balance, and it rewires your entire stress response. Yes, it can make ADHD symptoms feel better for a while, but that clarity, it comes with a cost your brain and body quietly keep paying. Over time, you're not getting sharper, you're just avoiding the crash. What once helped you focus now just helps you feel normal. And that's the real trap. The smarter path isn't about chasing stimulation, it's about building stability stability with sleep, movement, nutrition, proven treatment options. ADHD meds have decades of safety and research behind them. And if nicotine feels like it's helping, talk to your doctor about alternatives, like a nicotine replacement therapy or carefully monitored clinical tools. And if you're looking for more ways to support focus without rewiring your stress system, watch the next video linked below. Top five ADHD supplements I actually recommend to my patients is packed with real science, safe options, and zero addiction risk. Because your brain deserves better than a quick fix. And until next time, be safe and be well.